this steric, um, sorry, this mitotorial micrometer, ratchet stop, good lock, tenths micrometer, carbide faces, 10 bucks. Pretty good shape, I think. It's a number 115-153. This thing here, he couldn't tell me what this was. And I ended up getting it for five bucks. So it's got a MSC part number on it, plain as day. And it says it's a resharpening fixture. APT Dyna Sync whatever. So let me show you what this looks like. So this is got an you know, a shank on it, a straight shank on it that is offset to the body of the tool holder, right? And then, nearest I can figure is that's just the bushing that can be removed, so you could put two different sizes of shank in this thing. So, what we figure this is, is this is something that allows you to, you put this in some sort of a fixture, and then when you rotate it, Okay, because it's off center, it'll bring it up. It'll like maybe let that whatever you have in the mounted in here just kiss the bottom of the grinding wheel. That's the theory. All right, so that uh, high speed steel countersink sharpener for zero flute countersinks is still in the MSC catalog, the online catalog. It's $54.13 is the current web price for this thing. So. Not a cheap little fixture, but a zero flute countersink. So what a zero flute countersink is, is often it's referred to as a Weldon countersink because Weldon is the manufacturer that invented it. But just to give you... So for starters, here are some typical countersinks. This is a six flute, okay? And then a lot of people are familiar with the single flute countersink. So this has got one flute. Single flute countersink. So the zero flute or welding counter flute looks like this. There doesn't appear to be any flute. In fact, a lot of people look at these and wonder how the hell they work at all. Because they've just got like a hole drilled through the side. But, in fact, um, what looks like a cone on the end of this is actually not a... A perfect cone. Um, there's actually a bit of a almost like a spiral to the cone so that creates a situation where there is one of these lips on this hole ends up being higher than the other lip and that's the relief that's created so that when this thing comes around it can cut. So you can imagine the challenges in trying to sharpen something like that. So apparently that's what this fixture is supposed to help you do. Don't ask me how. But anyways, just thought I'd show in case somebody was wondering what the hell I was talking about as far as zero flute countersinks go. All right, we're almost at the end here. So this is one of the nicer items that he had. The case is kind of weird that it's got, I don't know what the heck is all over this case. It looks like it's oily or wet, but it's perfectly dry, but it's got the shine to it. So I don't know what somebody put on this case. Uh, but this is a Starrett zero to six inch depth mic. And it's actually in pretty nice shape. Really nice condition. Um, and the lock works on this. And it's a zero to six, all six rods. You've got three in the three in the top there and one in the device now and two more. That's six. You got both micrometer wrenches with it. So it's in really great shape. The foam's not all chowdered, so that's a nice set right there. Um, I really had to work to get him down on price on this, and I got him down to 45 on this. So I'll probably uh, be able to make like 20 bucks on this, if that. Anyways, so I got uh, one last item, or actually it's items, but this was also a big bonus, and I knew that he was going to let me have these for free, so I, I took into account when I was buying stuff, I kept thinking to myself, well, I'm also getting that stuff. So what it was, was he had a whole um, stack of cases uh, sitting there. 
and I recognized some of them and I thought there was stuff in them and he immediately said they were off to the side and he says oh no he said those are just empty boxes he said but you're welcome to take as many of those as you want so I went through the cases and he let me take as many of these as I wanted for free and I, I think I took almost all of them so here's a, a stare at last word case okay I occasionally will get a last word with no case so that's a nice find because you add the case to the you know the to the item and you, you add value um, a Mitotoyo indicator holder case and this I've got some like best tests some nice brown and sharps in that that I don't have cases for even just putting it in a case like this sure it's not the right brand but just to protect it that was nice Here's another Mitotoyo. Um, this appears to be for most likely a digital micrometer. Um, he, or actually he thinks, oh, I remember, I thought it was for a digital mic, and then he corrected me, and he says, actually, he says, I think that was for a multi-anvil micrometer. And then it, it occurred to me, I remembered that I have a Mitotoyo multi-anvil micrometer. It's a one to two inch. Uh, unfortunately, it's missing the lock. But I had no case for it. And I still have no case for it. Because that is not that is not right. Huh. See, I I don't know. I think I might well, the sticker would have been right here that would have told us exactly what this box was for, but you know, hey, I can even throw that little mic in there just to give it something to sit in. So anyways, the point being is that uh, it was a really nice find, uh, extra little bonus there that gave me all of these uh, cases. I mean, it is a best test case. That's going to definitely be put that right to work. I know I have some best tests that need cases. This is another Mitotoyo indicator case. Um, this is some kind of no-name, probably Chinese or something, case or NSK. You know, it's, but it's an earlier one. It's actually got a a decent clasp on it so I could probably find something in my collection that would uh, enjoy having a case for protection and uh, a couple of uh, Minotoyo caliper cases <laughs> ironically I just sold um, another uh, caliper um, with no case just a little while back. Funny how that works out. And then this is a large mid Toyo caliper case. Yeah, so. Oh, so. Oh, and even, I even took this little pouch that was sitting there. This is for a, um, pretty sure this is for a, um, whatchamacallit, a uh, edge finder. Which I occasionally get edge finders without cases or boxes. So he saw that I was taking so many of those cases there, and he says, "He says, you know, uh, he says I think I've got some some empty Starrett boxes too. You can have those if you want." So he went over to another part of his basement, and he came back with a box, and he gave me a whole box of Starrett boxes. I mean, I already mentioned, you know, that this, those little screwdrivers that I bought, they were in this uh, 56B surface gauge box at the top and the bottom. Here's the top and the bottom for a 257A surface gauge. Here's the top and the bottom box for a mag base indicator holder, a 657AA. That must be a big one. I think I have one of those in its own case. It wouldn't even fit in here because it has other stuff with it. The box and paperwork for a 445AZ-6RL depth gauge. So, oddly enough, that's not the depth gauge that I bought from him. 436P, 1 inch micrometer. I might have... Actually, I think I just sold that one. S50, S565PC, 8 drive pin punches. Drill point gauge. I got one of those. I think I already have one in the box, though. C183 Chrome Protractor. S423Z Quantity 1 Set. 
uh, ruler, oh, rules withholder. Huh. SA28HZ center finder. That's probably a wiggly set. A 466, whatever that is. No name. T463P. Oh, that's a micrometer head. I had, I think, a bunch of those 463P micrometer heads a while back. I sold them all. 494C. One set. I wonder what those were. Tool workers buttons. Hey! <laughs> Finally found actually a box and all of this stuff that would go to something I bought from him. Oh, suckers. <laughs> 94 C's. That'll work. 161 B. One pair of clamps. Oh, okay. These are V-block clamps. Wish there was a magic spell I could cast over these empty boxes and make everything that is supposed to be in these boxes just appear. That'd be cool. Boy, this is an early stare at box. It's a really early stare at box for an adjustable parallel or a small one. This is just a uh, lid to a spotting drill. So, and then these are covers without the bottoms. Um, this is a, for a Brown and Sharp. Oddly enough, this is for a Brown and Sharp um, two-inch micrometer, which I'm getting ready to sell this Brown and Sharp two-inch micrometer. Yeah, yeah, looks not that good. Huh? Oh, this is a two to three. You moron. <laughs> That'll be okay. Nothing a little bit more coffee won't cure. See, my battery died on the camera last night when I was doing this. It's early in the next morning. This is a, uh, a 995A precision gauge. I'll have to look that up because I have no idea what that is. 827A edge finder. T463P, another micrometer head, and another micrometer. Oh man, oh, my God. Could have had little boxes for all those micrometer heads. I think those were 463Ps, I don't remember. Anywho, oh man, you can tell that caffeine hasn't kicked in. The 445 <laughs> 0 to 6 inch mic, this is a, a 0 to 6. I for some reason I was thinking it was a zero to three but that was the last pick now now that's <laughs> fail like that honest to, honest to goodness this is a 445 yeah this is a 445 zero to six inch depth micrometer in its case okay and this is a box for a 445 AZ-6 RL depth mic it won't fit this is a wide base. He must have had, at some point, he must have had a narrow base one. You know, I asked him why he was getting rid of all the cases. And he said, I, I you know, actually, I think I asked where all the stuff was that was in these cases, because I would have liked to have bought it. And he said it was stuff he was keeping. He still works in the trade, and this is stuff that's in his toolbox at work. So I thought it was interesting that he's not keeping any of the boxes, because... At some point down the road, when he wants to sell off his stuff, he's going to increase the value of his of his stuff slightly by having the boxes. But I guess he was just, you know, like sick of having them just all sitting around. So now I have them all sitting around. <laughs> oh well, just my luck. Here's my uh, here's my 257A hardened large uh, surface gauge that's supposed to fit in this box but it obviously won't fit in the box because it's got the 12 inch spindle on it and this one was for the 27, 257A hard base with 9 inch spindle so eh c'est la vie alright well I hope you guys enjoyed this video hope I didn't ramble on too much there at the end uh, if you like this video please hit the like button and if you enjoy videos about tool finds, especially machinist tools, or just uh, videos on uh, working on older equipment, things like that, please consider subscribing. Take care.